before he delegated sales to somebody, right? This was this is pretty much common at any owner that's handling all the sales and wants to delegate it. You know, he spent whatever a decade before he even wanted to delegate anything, and he became a 10 out of 10 expert in his field. And when he was selling, he can, you know, you know, break down the information, like all the knowledge stuff to a client and transfer trust to that client because they're like, this fool is an expert. And because he's an expert and knows every little thing that I have questions or concerns about, I trust him and therefore want to buy. And his decade plus of head knowledge in exactly what he does, that is really difficult to, you know, uh, transfer quickly to somebody that's selling. Um, and therefore, you need to work on your sales process. And so you heard him mention things like, I have a script for every area of the sales process. When it comes to your sales process, you want to start thinking about it, right? And this is, you know, there's always an area to improve around this. I feel like, you know, we're a sales recruiting service company and we have almost 50 people. And, you know, I'm never happy with our processes. They're always like one out of 10 where I want them. Although I know compared to other organizations, they're great. I mean, there's always opportunity for improvement. And in terms of a sales process, you want to list out kind of every stage within it, right? For them, it's maybe incoming lead, pick up the phone, schedule the appointment, confirm the appointment, show up to the gym, you know, fill out the document, whatever, right? For you, whether you have an entry level outside or inside sales role, or they're managing the A to Z sales cycle in the gym or on the phone or in the field door to door or in the business, whatever, for you, there are specific stages in your sales process. And if you bring on a, a new hire, and this is like, you know, for every role, but we're talking about, you know, sales, if you bring a new hire um, in and they're not a, you know, a top five, top 10 percent or like, you know, the people watching, you know, these podcasts, the type of people that just can be thrown into anything and wing it, right, which is not the normal person. If you don't have those kind of people, which is not the normal type of hire, the normal type of person is the average person that ideally aligns with their values. If you don't have a really cookie cutter process that somebody can plug into and it's well defined and well descript, uh, well scripted, it's going to be really difficult for them to see success in that position. And if you add a long ramp up and an all commission opportunity on top of that, man, it's exponentially more difficult. So if you're building a commission based sales team, you got to really define your sales process in stages, right? And so you list out, okay, what happens first? I'm prospecting, make contact, set appointment, you know, uh, confirm the appointment, the appointment shows up, I pitch, um, I, you know, follow up, I send contract, close, get referral, whatever the you know, stages are, you want to list those out and define everything that happens within those. And then you also want to think about, hey, what tech is necessary within those sales stages to make it more streamlined so that it's easier for me to sell and future hires to sell, right? And then within those stages, like Ben was talking about, there's certain areas within those stages, whether you have four stages or 10, that there's scripting involved, right? When somebody calls in for them, they pick up the phone. That's the first time one of their sales guys or their trainers is going through the process. And they all do the same thing, right? And they know exactly what part of the sales stage that is. And they know after training, okay, I get off the phone, I plug it into the computer, I confirm it, right? They know every little step and therefore he actually has a process to train them into. And if that's not there, you can't have success with the normal person, which is the type of person that most people are going to hire because, you know, the top five, 10 percenters that, you know, leaves out 90% of the that population. So that that's a big thing that stuck out to me. And then in terms of, um, you know, uh, training, he does eight to 10 hours of role play. This is huge. Okay. And by the way, when you, you know, you know, um, you know, if you're a commission based sales organization, right. A lot of the times, like a lot of the clients that we, we help, you know, 75% of them, they need a sales leader, right. They, you know, they, they can't do everything under the sun, but you got to realize what you have now and, you know, what you can do for your new hire. So you got to work with what you got, right? When he hired his first person, he probably wasn't doing the role play eight to 10 hours. That maybe came years after when he realized, oh, this is important, right? Um, but one of the things that he does to really collapse the learning curve for his people is he does eight to 10 hours of role play. Okay, sales stage, you know, pick up the phone, sales stage, pitch the agreement, 
right? <clears throat> Let's go through that stuff, right? Role play, role play, role play. I'm the customer, right? And we get that, we force them through their learning curve as soon as possible. So when it's actually game day, they're going to do better versus making their learning curve 30 to 60 days longer and just kind of getting kicked in the teeth more during their, their learning period. Um, he, he also does shadowing, right? Mm -hmm. Once they're out of the role play <clears throat> and they're actually pitching, he's got himself or one of their top people shadowing that person to make sure that they're able to do the job well. And so that they can kind of stumble and fail. And, you know, that person shadowing them can correct the information at the end of the pitch and then also provide coaching at the end of it to get the rep through their uh, learning curve. These are huge things, especially in um, sales training. Um, and I love, <laughs> I love that you, this is like perfect for me right now because I was working on, you know, we help all sorts of different industries, right? And we're redoing all our content and we're not just a sales recruiting service company, but we help them dial in their comp plans, their onboarding, the training, the way that they manage their people, the mission, vision, values, kind of everything necessary to retain people resulting into sales production. And literally this morning, one of the things I was working on is like, I was developing, you know, I was, I was creating the processes around, Hey, this is how you improve your sales process. And I was trying to figure out a cookie way to a cookie cutter way to think about of objections so they can define that. And you gave it to me. And I'm super pumped about that time, money partner. So thank you for that. I'm yeah. stealing that one. I'm pumped about that. Take it, take it. Um, and uh, and uh, yeah, I love it. So that that is all awesome stuff. So a lot of training goes into your your people. And the more you know, the more, over time as you grow your company, again, you got to work with what you got. The more human resources that you have over time the more that you can improve the training process for new hires, which increases your retention rates, right? If I'm a solo owner and I'm working 60 hours per week and I'm like, I need to get my sales, you know, sales team off the ground, right? The training process for the first few hires versus a year away when you have five to 10 reps and you've transitioned somebody into leadership, it's night and day because now you have a top rep and a sales manager to help you with that process. But yeah.